Hi folks, I'm Matt and we're way overdue for a board game review. Alright folks, we are continuing our reviews of Firefly the Game. This is the expansion called Pirates and Bounty Hunters. Now in this, of course, you're going to get some new story cards. You're also going to have some new deals. All of these are pirating deals here to appear to the game of Pirates and Bounty Hunters. And as you see here, the only they give you some extra tokens of everything. The only new thing is Havens, which I'll discuss in a minute. Havens are places that you can put on planets uh, for your ship to be safe from pirates or people collecting bount, uh, bounties on you. It's basically a, what it means, a safe haven for your ship and crew. Uh, it also came with wanted bounties. Now, of course, these wanted bounties will come out three at a time. And then... Uh, you can, uh, if you search for these people, turn them in, or well, we'll talk more about this in a minute, but you have to search for these wanted people, you get certain amounts per crew. Uh, they switch out every time a Alliance nav card is uh, play that one card in the deck that makes you reshuffle. When that card is chosen, you will have to reset these and put three more out. Now, if one of them has been collected, you just remove that one and one from the game and that person from the game if they've been collected. As you can see here, lots of them. Some of these are moral and immoral. Uh, we'll come across uh, some of the really good people are going to be immoral-like. Yeah, there you go, River and Simon Tam. See that? They're going to be immoral there. And it gives you a little uh, showdown responses, which, I, like I said, again, I'll talk about how showdowns work in a minute. But uh, as you see here, lots of different ones, lots of different characters in the wanted list. This makes for an extremely fun dynamic uh, through the game that you didn't have beforehand. Uh, you may even have some of these characters in your own fold. Like, let's say that, let's see the next one. Let's say you had a bandit on your crew. You could turn in that bandit for $2,000 if you wanted to. Turn them in right into the uh, Federation there. But the thing is though, when you do turn in one of these people and they're on your own crew, you actually disgruntle your whole crew because that wasn't very kind to turn in and betray one of your own crew. But you can do that and collect the reward. But before I get into all of the rules here, let me talk about the new ships they have. They have two new ships here. Uh, one of them is the SS Walden. As you can see, let's see if I can get a good shot of that. There you go. Really nice, really nice uh, ship there, nice vehicle. Uh, it's a little bit different than the other ones. As you can see here, it has a drive range of four. It can only go four. It goes very slowly. Now, uh, salve, it's a salvage cow. It says you complete piracy jobs also count as salvage ops. So if any of your crewmen have cards that say, hey, during a salvage op, collect this. Well, same thing if you do a piracy job your crew can actually give you bonuses for that. And I'll talk about how piracy works later on in the game. Of course, this one is immune to the heavy load penalty, as you see there, meaning in some of the cards on the original base set, I told you about how some heavy loads require two fuel to burn. Well, not with this one. It still only burns one fuel, so that's really nice. Uh, its captain here is Sash. Of course, it doesn't have to be the captain, but it's the captain that came with the deck. And it says, uh, when you complete a piracy job, steal $500 from that targeted rival. So you can steal, actually, some of their money, too. That's really awesome. And plus, he counts as a hacking rig, which, uh, so Sash is a really cool captain to have. Now, one of the things I love about the SS Walden is look at all the cargo space. That is incredible. There is so much cargo space in there. Unfortunately, there is no stash, though, so you cannot hide things from the Alliance. Uh, so that would be bad. Anyway, the next one is the Interceptors. Jubal Early's Interceptor. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it there. There it is. Beautiful ship. And this one is all about the need for speed, folks. Look at this. It's an 8. And it can't be replaced, just like this engine cannot re be replaced for this ship. You cannot replace this drive core with something else. It has to be an 8. But look at this. No fuel required to initiate a burn. What? This dude is the fastest moving ship in the verse right here. Uh, if you look at some of the other things, they can re-roll boarding tests, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then Optimal Spec says each currently installed ship upgrade reduces the Interceptor's drive core by range of one. So for instance, see it has two extra upgrades. Not three that the regular does. So that's kind of a uh, take away from this one. But anyway, uh, if you, the more you put in here, the slower this goes. So it can go as slow as a six. Put one in here, it goes to seven, put two ship upgrades, turns to a six. So if you want to soup up this starship 
it's going to cost you some speed. Now, some other negative things though about this, look at that, there's only four cargo holds. This baby was made for piracy and bounties, bar none. If you're this ship, the only way you're really making your money is through piracy and bounties. Uh, you can do some shipping jobs, but you won't be able to carry that much. You may be limited in what you can do. But incredible ship, love to play with it. And of course, another takeaway, oh no, it only has a crew member of four, which usually is a crew member of six on every one else's. But it's a four if you're the interceptor. So there's a, a few negative things that kind of balance out the superior speed of this vehicle. Also, let's look at Jubal Early's card. Now he is the suggested pilot for this. You can have any leader pilot that ship. But it says, hey, it's a plus two when attacking in a showdown. Plus two fight, that's nice. He also has one of each skill, so that's really nice too. And he can carry two gear. So two additional gear, making him a very, very, very powerful leader. Of course, you're gonna need a powerful leader when you can only have a maximum crew of four. So these two ships, really awesome, really great. But that is not all. Let me talk about this game and how it works. Now, of course, in this game, you're slowly, you're doing either pirate jobs here or you're collecting bounties. And when you're collecting bounties uh, or doing pirate jobs, you have to land, and I don't have the board out here today, but you have to land on the exact same uh, sector as that ship. And then as one of your actions, do a boarding and then, of course, a showdown with that other uh, captain. And in the showdown, you pick whichever skill you have the most of. So let's say I am, I'm, a, I'm Jubal Early attacking the SS Walden here, and my biggest fight skill out of all my crew is fight. So I'm gonna roll for fight and see if I can get the highest roll of fight skills. But Sash's may be negotiation. He may have a crew full of negotiation. That would be his highest. So he's gonna roll on negotiation points and how high he can go. And the thing is, whoever has the highest roll at the end of these two powers, that was who wins. Either they fend you off and something bad happens to this captain, or I win and then something really bad happens to this captain, meaning I'm going to rob your cargo if it's a piracy job, or I'm going to steal one of your crew members who are wanted and uh, try to clock in that bounty. Now you can only do one boarding action per turn. So you can't do just, if you land on the same square of them, you can't do three boarding actions until you finally get through. You can only do that one boarding action showtime per turn. This avoids a lot of back and forth confusion because if I use all three turns, what are you going to do on your turn? You're going to turn around and attack me and try to get it back. So it's once per turn, so that person can flee after this, or after I'm done, I may flee on my next action and try to get the heck out of Dodge before you can try to come back and get me. I love this rule, I love the showdowns, I love how it works. Like I said, bad things happen to either captain if they lose. Uh, so there's, there is uh, consequences for choosing poorly or choosing illy timed bounties or piracies. But the benefits, oh, I mean, as you see just from the bounties alone, that you can reap in the benefits. Same thing with these cards, you actually reap in a lot by pirating. And of course, these three different uh, scenarios that I haven't played yet, uh, I've read over them, they look incredible. But folks, that's not all that this game offers. Uh, this game also offers uh, a few extra cards for all your regular decks. I'm gonna go through some of those cards now. Uh, first off, you have Lawman. And uh, he, he's just Agent McGinnis. Whenever you have him in a showdown, if you lose one, a warrant is issued to the rival. That's incredible. Plus, he gets an extra 500 bonus on bounty bonus if he turns in a bounty. But any lawman, this is for all lawmen, not just McGinnis, they will not work illegal jobs. If you're working a legal job, you cannot count the lawman or any weapons in his possession. So the lawmen are really good for... Uh, bounty hunting basically is what they're really awesome for. They really help you with that and of course uh, some piracy if they try to take you down a showdown a lawman can help you out because he's on the right side of the law. Alright so next up you have the ship upgrade electronic defense suite. And I love this. It, uh, the rival boarding your ship may not use tech skills when for boarding tests. That's gonna be huge. Also something that's big you can spend a fuel to evade a reaver cutter that's nice, you don't need the pilot and the mechanic like I said you did in the base head if you have one of these. It also says ignore the effects of either the reaver cutter nav card or the contact event. That is big, one or the other you can ignore. For only $500, that is a steal and of course they have two of them right there in the deck. All right, what else do we have here? Well, the next one is the guardian 
and he can re-roll showdown tests. That would be really awesome. He may be worth it. He's also a medic too, so that justifies his $300 cost. This is another weapon I just love. They added it to the game. It's the Alliance Sonic Rifle. When using this gun on, sh uh, using this as a gun in showdowns, you must follow kosherized rules. Now, if you remember from my review on the base set, kosherized rules are we can only go by what they have on their card, not what gear they have. You don't add their extra gear. So these Alliance Sonic Rifles would be awesome to have. Another awesome one. This is booby traps. It's a minus two to a rival's boarding test. And uh, if, a, if a rival rolls a, a one during a boarding test, you, they actually get to kill off, well, they have to kill off one of their crew because the booby trap went off. And remember, before I, I have to do a boarding test rule, which those rules are in the instructions, they're fairly simple. I have to roll a certain number here and break on in. Of course, certain cards will determine what that number may be if it takes away or adds points to my roll. So I'm not really, that's why I'm not giving you a specific number here because it depends on what cards are in play right now. Uh, anyway, you can also discard this to work as explosives. I think this is a great ship upgrade, especially when you're in a world of pirates and bounty hunters. All this stuff is really set to protect you, your crew, and your ships. And of course, another one of these. This one I just love. I know I'm going to say that for all these cars, but look at this ship upgrade. It's a, it's a, a cryo status unit. Rivals cannot jump your bounties. That means if you capture someone, I can put them in this cryostasis unit and no one can capture that bounty. I can safely deliver that bounty to the desired place. I love this. Or you could actually, if you're taking out one of your crew members, they can ignore Alliance crew roles here. All right, so if you have a wanted crew member, hide them in the cryo unit and you don't have to roll for their warrant. Uh, if Alliance Cruiser's on you, I love that as well. You have a firearm, it's Dobson's Vector Pistol. It may be used in coasterized fights and doesn't count toward gear limits. You can actually, this is like a holdout pistol. So you can hide it on your gear, you can count it in a coasterized fight. It does count as a plus one and it doesn't count toward your gear limit. Love, love the idea for these cars. Here's Dobson himself. He's a, if he's, you're in Alliance space, you can call the Alliance Cruiser to your sector as a fly action. He's a plus $500 in bonuses, but of course, just like all lawmen, he does not do illegal jobs. Dobson would be imperative if, if you're doing bounties here. Imagine this. You have to take these bounties here and deliver it to the uh, Alliance. And if you're in Alliance space, Dobson, and for an action roll, he will activate that cruiser and have it come to you instead of you having to track it down and fly, fly to it. Uh, the, he'd be awesome for uh, pirates and bounties. Next one is some scan proof shades. They're uh, fancy duds. Any crew carrying these can ignore those Alliance wanted crew rolls. Next up is just a bandit. It says bird dog. And when you complete piracy jobs, you steal $200 from that targeted rival. It's just robbing, robbing them, sticking it in their face uh, when they die. Uh, also, there's other bandits here and here, of course. Here's another deputy. This is a lawman. It's plus one in showdowns, as you see. There's a bounty bonus, and of course they, like other lawmen, do not use illegal jobs. Uh, you have a mag grappler launchers. They're a plus three for boarding test. After all salvage ops, you would roll one of these. So if you go th one through seven, there's nothing shiny, but if you get a plus eight in tech rolls, you take a ship upgrade from the discard pile. Are you kidding me? This is a great card. I would love this card. There are so many ship upgrades. I need like seven openings of ship upgrades because all of these, all of these are so completely awesome. All right, next up is Sash's hand cannon. This is horrible, horrible, folks, because before rolling a showdown, you can disgruntle the uh, rival's leader with this hand cannon. Now, why is that a big deal? Because one thing I've saved to tell you about here is that when, when you are successful, let's say I am successful in robbing this captain or I'm successful in taking one of their crew for a bounty, this captain and all of its crew get disgruntled. If I'm using Sash's cannon, hand cannon, then I actually disgruntle the leader twice. And what happens when I do that? They fire their entire crew. This is, this is a brutal, brutal card. I wonder if they knew how awful this card is in the game. They probably did. So if you're doing a bounty job, wouldn't be wise to use Sash's hand cannon because you're going to scare the whole crew away. However, you are pirating them and it's just a piracy job, Ooh, you can add insult to injury, use Sash's hand cannon, and if you're successful, not only does he lose his cargo, but he can also lose his crew. Horrible, horrible card. Oh my goodness, so terrible. 
Uh, next one, Sheriff Bourne. He's a plus two in fight test. Uh, while in border space, not in alliance space, only in border space does he have power. Of course, you see that bounty bonus there, and of course, like all lawmen, won't work illegal jobs. Here's another bandit here. Another bandit there. Same rules apply as, as normal. Here's a cool one. Here's Sherry. And in a showdown, you can force a rival to re-roll. So if they roll higher than you, if you have her on your side, she can force that other rival to re-roll. I think that's really awesome. Uh, here's friendly game of cards. This is gambling. I love anything that's gambling. And this one, you discard it to use it. So once you discard it, you use it. You pay the bank $300, flip over a suite. Uh, well, name the suite first, then flip over those three misbehaved cards. If any of those match the suite that you named out, you take $500 per card, so up to $1,500, and remove one disgruntled token for each card that matches that su suit. That is awesome. That is awesome. I love it. It's fantastic. I love gambling. I, I think they should have more of these cards actually in the deck. All right, next up is our lawman. Uh, of course, uh, it's a plus one in showdowns. There's a bounty bonus. Doesn't work. Illegal jobs. Meadows. Love Meadows. Look, he has nothing, no advantages on his name. He's free. Why would you want Meadows? Because anytime a crew is killed, apprehended, or seized by the Alliance, you can kill Meadows instead of that character. You can save that person from death by just killing off Meadows. So Meadows, on his own, is pretty worthless. But if you're trying to save someone who's wanted, who's really not expendable to the crew, you can kill off Meadows instead and save your crew member. Wow! How smart was this? So Meadows, genuinely just regularly useless card because he's even moral too. But the power that they gave him makes him almost the most important card in the deck. I love, love, love how Gale Force 9 writes these cards. Here's another ship upgrade, the EVA suit. Uh, it's a plus uh, one for boarding tests on tech. Uh, one cargo on salvage ops, that's always nice. And one crew member on board the ship make nor Alliance wanted crew roll. So again, you can hide another crew member with this device here. Uh, of course, not from bounties, just from the Alliance, you know, on the Alliance ship. Uh, remember in the TV show, they actually use the suit to, you know, hide from Jubal early. And there's another one of those as well. All right, and here's uh, Dalen. He's an intel broker. I love this one. He says, once per work action, you may pay $200 to discard and uh, redraw a misbehaved card. This is awesome. So if you get a misbehaved card that you don't think you can do, like they're both just too out of your range, it's too hard. If you have this guy, the intel broker, you can go ahead, pay $200 and get just a new card. That could be invaluable at times. All right, next up is Jubal Early stuff. You got Early's, Early's Combat Armor. It's the same as that armor that you saw in the Breaking Atmo expansion booster pack, except it comes with extra gun and tech bonuses. And of course, that's why it sports a little bit heavier price than that regular armor we talked about in another video. Uh, here's Early's Data Scope. This one's interesting. It says, as a work action, you can reveal the top three cards on your current location supply deck. So if you're on one of those particular planets, you can flip over those three cards and place them all in the discard pile. Now, why would you really want that? That seems expensive. But if you think about it, it also counts as a permanent hacking rig, which is nice. But at the same time, you can flip over those three cards and then choose as your next action to go shopping. Pick one of those cards and pick three more or whatever you want to do. So it actually lets you get a sneak peek at those three cards before actually searching for stuff or shopping for stuff, I should say. Finally is Early's Pistol. It counts as a plus one firearm and a plus two in showdowns. So that's really neat too. Now, one of the things is, remember earlier I told you that what if I was the captain of someone who was wanted? You know, what would I do? Could I turn them in? Yes, I could, but I would also disgruntle my crew by doing that. So let's get down to brass tacks here. Is this an expansion worth your time? Well, I'm going to agree with everyone else on the internet and say, yes, it is. It adds that extra dimension, that competitive nature that is that's somewhat missing from the base game. I don't mind that it's missing from the base game. I love playing the base game as is. In fact, to this day, to this video, we have not gotten to play the Bounty Hunters and Pirates expansion yet. But I look forward to the time we do, and we can be scared of not just Reavers, but each other as well. 
Because remember, I can hold that pirate job until I land on your space. I may be wanting to trade with you. Remember? You can land on the same space. You can trade with someone. Say, hey, let me trade. Let me get some of your fuel from you. Sure. And then I would just reveal, oh, by the way, I'm a pirate and you're going down. That's awful. It's wicked. And I love it. I love the extra ships. I love the ability to now play seven players. That would be awesome. It's going to get very crowded in my verse. But I love this expansion idea. Cannot wait to play it myself. You should definitely get it too. Just by looking at the game, it adds so many extra dimensions to it. Without over complicating the game or adding on to its time limit because I really don't see this being that big of a time limit here because it's just extra jobs to work. It may even speed up the chance of completing certain goals or tasks or whatever. And the story cards, ooh, the scenarios they give you look great. All right, gamers, that's all for now. Until then, game on.